Welcome to Curious Chimps Podcast. I'm your co-host, Nathaniel Pearl. And I'm Sam Sheva. And welcome. We here at Curious Chimps are law-abiding citizens. We do not endorse anything illegal. And anything we discuss is for entertainment and not information purposes. We are not experts, and nor do we claim to be. So please, consult the doctors, do your research, read the label, and for the love of all that is holy, be safe. All right, let's talk about drugs. Curious, curious, curious chips. So this is the anti-podcast. This is the fucking... We're going to talk about not drugs today. Beautiful. We're going to maybe even try to define what psychedelic means to us. Like yeah. what a... I mean, we could Google in Webster's Dictionary the bitch, but it'll be like referring to a psychedelic state. Like it'll it'll define itself because it's just kind of like a... That kind of word. That's a... It's an interesting point. And especially since most of our... Well, all of our podcasts had a psychedelic root behind it. Uh, more of substance space. We're going to go into the actual state of mind you can achieve without any of that mm. not saying it's not necessary or n- not needed well in a sense it isn't but it does help you know but there's so many things you can do in life and practice and whatever that can get you to that state of mind naturally yeah which i kind of hate that word naturally but because on the natch on the natch i love that term <laughs> i yeah i i think it took me a long time it, recently only really I call them plant medicines and I don't feel stupid hmm. you know like I'm just I'm, I was like saying it out of respect before but now I'm like no man like I was talking to somebody a couple of days ago and it's like it's like for that problem you're talking about and the drugs you're taking like why not do shrooms hmm. and then the person's like well there's there's side effects to shrooms too there's drawbacks and I'm like not really <laughs> Like I'm like you know don't take my word for it I, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about I just read a thing that a guy wrote or something you know mm. equivalent but it's like you know it yeah it, I'm sure it hurts everything costs something but like like uh, a lot of the reason why vegetables are good for you is because there's natural pesticides inside of it if it hurts you a little bit your body reacts to that and it's like you build a callus like a protection layer mm. but at like a cellular level or what do you mean like natural immune uh, system. pesticides. Just the, plants have the shit plant inside itself, that's yeah. toxic mm. for i mean like it, it like you know to to dissuade insects i guess yeah that's true and it's just like it's built into how how they and are, are a healthy plant. Pro- able to process that and take what's necessary and reject what's not and i wonder you know like there's, they say there's a little bit of cyanide and like apple seeds and shit like that it's like we we were indiscriminate you know like I, when I, I see a friend sometimes he just like eats a pear and he eats the whole fucking thing and like takes the stem out like a chicken bone and I'm like, I do that too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. well, yeah, but the pears, I do it too now. <laughs> but you I, do it with like apples? I, no, that's what I'm saying. Oh. There's a lot of the fruits and shit I don't do it with. I mean, don't do it with a peach. You're going to break your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Dad joke. Uh, Which is I funny because it felt good. My dog, Lily, she she ate a peach once and then we went for a walk and everything. She took a shit and I looked at the shit because you have to pick it up, right? And you have to look f- at it. Yeah. <laughs> And I pick it up and it was hard as rock. What the fuck? And like I smeared it in the bag and there was a full on. Um, That's love right there. You're like, is something wrong with my dog? Smear shit in your hand. <laughs> and there was the pit of the peach in there. She just swallowed it whole. She's like, fuck it. I'm Retarded. hungry. Yeah. Dude, one time, because my, my dad was like feeding my pug uh, very often. And like one time he's eating a, an olive and he throws the pit on the floor and she just assumed it was food and ate it. And we just all look at my dad. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Nice one, bro. <laughs> Look what you trained her to do. Oh, man. Just smells vaguely like food, and she's like... <laughs> and it's a pug, too, right? So they're just like... <laughs> like fucking... uh, I love pugs, though. That They have so many problems, respiratory issues, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Animals, like, you know, like, let's go, let's go left field right away in the podcast. Animals, like pets, that's very psychedelic. Mm. In, in general, if you, if you really engage in what's happening in front of you, it can be very psychedelic. Sometimes yeah. it can be mundane, but you, can, you just got to look closer kind of thing. You but you cats. don't have to look that close with animals. With cats, it's very odd because they have like this demeanor with them. It's like they're, they don't care about you. Or but... stray dogs too mm. because they're, it's like a different thing. Yeah. There's not, there's like they're independent. It's weird. It's like they, they, they choose to go to you when they need it but, or when they decide to. It's not like a domesticated pet where it's fucking all they know is love from you and i love picturing that like there's some it's like a meme right it's like cats like a like a cat acts like a big cat 
Like the, your cat at home thinks it's a fucking lion. It's just tiny. It just can't do anything. But like that's why you see these YouTube videos where like someone's like fucking like just like scratching the face of a cheetah, you know? And it's like, okay, that thing might murder him, but like he probably feeds him every day or something. And like it's so he's strange. a trainer, maybe like he knows what he's doing, but it's still very dangerous. Or maybe it's like a, like a declawed or detoothed like situation, which is fucking weird. But it's like even in you saw the movie Avatar. Which one? The, the last Airbender. Two? Um, the okay, no, the blue one, the, the blue guys, yeah, the, the blue people. What, what's the other one? It's do you, you don't know the show, uh, The Last Airbender? No. Like it's like a anime. Well, it's not an anime because it's Canadian, but it looks like anime. Okay. And it's fucking great. Actually, it's like an awesome children's show about like like a like an alternate Earth, and okay. it's like very like a ancient China vibe. And there's like four main martial arts, and it's like you can control either fire, water, air, or earth. Okay. And uh, I think my buddy's really big cool. on that show. And you know what? Actually, anyone who's listening to this podcast, if I know if you know what I'm talking about, and you hate the movie, just watch it again and don't compare it to the show. Hmm. Like, you know, you could watch it, Nate, and like it'd be fresh eyes because you've never seen the show. It's a fucking cool movie. Okay. It's just that like there's so many like it's rushed. It's like a whole first season like pushed into one movie and I would have loved to see two others. Like it's cool. There's cool fight scenes and there was like a cool it was just a good movie, but it mm. got fucking dick smashed. <laughs> just fucking judo chopped into nonsense like just douche. Okay. Well, that's a shame if you're a fan of the show and then you see the show a movie like that. Yeah, exactly. Well, anyway, but fuck like, um, random go. side rant. Yeah. So yeah, pets are weird. Cats what were we talking about? Um <laughs> Yeah, like uh, yeah. cats are very strange because especially when we went to the, like I, I'm not a big fan of cats to begin with. Mm. Just I prefer the love the dogs give. I don't like working for it. I know, hard. we've had this cat dog <laughs> discussion, me and you. I'm on everything. But per, I don't know, maybe not birds or some weird shit. My ex had a, <laughs> she had a really cool cat. They birds found cool. They found this cat in like a, a stray cat, found him downtown. Those are always fun. And this cat was so chill, like... He, like I think he was so grateful that he was taken in. Yeah, I, I'm sure he was still a little like uh, wiry. Yeah. yeah, and like, but he had like these manners and like would just eat anything. Like it was just like fuck it, like stray style. Just eat whatever. If there's like scraps in the garbage, I'll get my way to it. I'll eat it. Adorable. <laughs> yeah. That you, that's uh, like empathy is psychedelic too. Like I imagine like I'm thinking about this cat and I'm thinking deeply about the experiences it went through to kind of like traumatize it and shape it and then like like there's even a word for it like feral like even a human can go feral it's like you're beyond teaching a part of you is like ptsd'd into the fucking ground and you're you're like huh, what's it what the? <laughs> you know what was that sound yeah. and you're you're you know it's it's evolution you're gonna live more than the other guy who's like yeah i got fucking eaten by like my leg got bitten <laughs> off by a crocodile like i'm gonna try swimming again tomorrow though because fucking you know well, that's Yolo. That, that's what encompasses a personality is all the traumas and the goods and the bads combined that kind of creates this honeycomb of yeah. who you are, right? But the trauma sticks more mm. than the good stuff because that's true. It's just biology. It's just like you don't, you didn't need to evolve into something that remembered the good shit. Like the, there's sensory input that's like really addicting sort of and like you'll remember where you got water or fat or salt or sugar like that'll fucking trick your brain into being like good dish that's that's kind of like a psychedelic experience also is like these these like spikes and sensation and and for some reason for a good reason danger and pain are like spikier hmm. to you it's well, cool why is that because we would die like we're yeah. the apex of evolution right now yeah. we're it we're the now of this crazy engine that's like just pumping out life and they didn't it didn't corner itself like maybe it did with dinosaurs and then it got fucking <laughs> dick smashed mm. dick smashed is my word for today <laughs> by uh, meteors and all the who knows what and uh, yeah so we're we're here because we're scared of everything more than the other guy we see the snake in the grass we remember the bush we got bit that or our friend got bit even like there's empathy like all the mechanisms are it's all this crazy lego thing and that's why i like uh the idea of chakras because it's literally like biological evolution like the root chakra is 
it's basic survival it's cellular life it's fucking it's eat sleep shit fuck you know like whatever and actually cells don't fuck they they divide and then you're you're always aging you never make a new set of dna so that's why the the next chakra would be considered like the sex chakra Hmm. and then through that the ego is born and you get complex life that's actually competing with each other even though the species is doing that to propagate better dna and it's all just an accident it's all just like a bubble like it has to take that shape because over time it'll find that space Hmm. and what i mean by bubble is like a bubble is a sphere because it's just the most efficient shape it it can take yeah and then so yes sex leads to the ego because then it's like we're both crabs but i'm like i'm a better crab than you so at some weird basic level i need to have a concept of you versus me i have to look at you and go i'm a thing and i'm better than you Hmm. and i i'm gonna wave my big crab arm big better than you or whatever you know once you have that division that ego like over a long period of time now there's this evolution there's this intelligence that's born of that like as a as a more complex creature with that ego that ability to like perceive themselves as separate and to like compete amongst their own species like you you everything you ha- like we have here like in a philosophical way becomes real and what i mean by that is like you realize that you're here you think about your place you start thinking about the archetypal other the actual others that surround you the separation sp- right yeah and even spiritually the lack thereof if if you go that far you know mm-hmm. but even before the way before that you can just have like some kind of empathy is born Mm. you realize like i'm a person and there's like this kind of like meta person you know like like you're alive too you're having the same experience as me unless you're a solipsist but then it still like comes back to you like if you don't believe other people are real and it's all just kind of like a brain in a vat dream like that you're having you know even if that's true you're still it all it's all the inner world there's only the inner world Mm -hmm. whether you're here or not doesn't matter i'm affecting me and i'm gonna live accordingly yeah love is born from that then that's the next chakra you know it's literally this like i i'm here and there's a beauty to that and that's the ego that's realizing it's like having a part of your brain develop so that you can have like so the brain can talk to itself Hmm. like a part of it is like a fake like a small part like so it's so it's an identity like this kind of like contained thing that like all the input goes through but then there's this huge like trailer that you're pulling that's like your subconscious and everything and you literally can talk to yourself we talked about it on the other podcasts when we're talking about like uh, singing therapy Mm -hmm. like that's why it's effective you end up saying shit that you don't they didn't realize what true and then you hear it it's all coming from you that's weird Mm. but it works yeah and uh, anyway so that's the heart chakra yeah okay and then from that this is another like a leap but it does still make sense in my mind uh from like born born of empathy uh like listening is is becomes like a a higher quality you learn properly and i think that's what makes the throat chakra work properly is knowing how to speak comes from knowing how to listen and it's like the idea of communication in general maybe if you want to go if you want to make it like really fit into the Hmm. the throat chakra so that doesn't that space that listening that that real exchange isn't there without love or isn't the same quality or i don't know it's it's kind of like these logical leaps i'm making i kind of tell myself that story like just to remember the the chakras Hmm. and that's that that high level of of information exchange leads to the third eye leads to seeing what's real Hmm. and uh when you see what's real you see what isn't and you that's the last or let's say the first chakra that's like the when you leave you're you're in the you're in god territory now okay you're in the crown cool and uh, the third one's kind of like two small ones like there's weird what, what weird little it? details <laughs> the crown chakra is where it's like right above the head like on mm. the crown of the head okay and i guess that would be the pineal gland everyone thinks the pineal gland's the third eye but i think it's the is that the thymus i don't know it's like another uh no, it's like another P. Anyway, there's another gland in the hmm. pituitary. pituitary. Boom. Jinx. You got to give a little, <laughs> little pinky bump. <laughs> Dude, that's, why is that so satisfying? I love the pinky bump. Because you know why? It Boop. requires a lot of attention to that, aim it. You're right. There's you know, this there's concentration. A lot of focus. It's like when you pass a joint. 
Like you guys <laughs> are like docking a ship. You can see the hands just like find each other and then it's like in sync and moving <laughs> together. Oh my god. Okay, anyway, we we we're already late and we're already kind of ranty and vibing. It's so good. like let's focus it in a little bit again cuz like psychedelic I've had psychedelic experiences from food, from sex, mm-hmm. from lack of food or sex, from cold showers or well cold the pool more than anything well, really it's cold water therapy uh fucking the sauna, sauna sort of incredible. not yep. really though because there's some stuff i feel like it puts me in my body too much and the sauna gets uncomfortable and then it's like i said before it can anything can be psychedelic if you pour in enough attention hmm. and presence but there's things that just knock you into your body like the rapé or the or or mushroom like the, it shows you something or it's kind of like it, it elevates the experience instead of diminishing the experience that's why maybe like alcohol can be psychedelic but it like depressants are maybe harder to well, argue let's uh, dance around the idea of how we define psychedelic yeah i tried i kind of tried not to think about it so i could just give an honest answer like yeah, on the so podcast and i'm, I'm i want to sure. hear your, your point of view and i'll throw mine on and we'll see if they match i'm i mean yeah we'll just riff on it like i I want to say, uh, like, I guess I'm trying to be too careful about it, but it's it's uh, it's a experience. It's like a feeling of uh, displacement, and mm-hmm. things become surreal or hyper real or uh, numbed. Maybe like there, it's a it's a displacement. It's a it's a lens change. The, mm-hmm. Everything changes because it's actually you that's like bumped a little to another notch. Mm-hmm. So everything like that's maybe that's how I would explain it. It's like a it's like a strange feeling of like a difference, but but the, but it's everything. Hmm. Maybe not necessarily everything, but it's like a perspective shift. Nice. So then you see everything differently, even nice. if it's just drug induced and temporary. It's it's like whoa. It's a shift in your in your in your viewpoint. Can I just say it's like whoa? That's my it's like, view. Whoa. I love it. I wish I would have just said, bro, psychedelic. Okay, define. Whoa. It's, it's like whoa. <laughs> My you know? my definition is very <laughs> similar. I think it's good that we have our own de- definitions for what it means to you because that's the value in it, right? I usually try to think about it and Google it and even look up etymology. Like I'm one of those. Like my, mm. it, words don't mean anything anymore. I'm one. I'm I'm very vexed by that. It's like sad, it, and and especially after reading the book Simulacra and Simulation, realizing that like it just that's what humans do. Like we just pass on information to the next generation and you lose something every time and if all you need to do is do that twice and you lose all the information of the first one possibly hmm. and so imagine like the million the, the, well, i don't know the thousands of times that humans have passed shit down and it's just broken telephone we don't know what the fuck we're doing yeah we're just monkeys like zapping each other and not that's knowing where you why. create your your definition for what for what it means to you and that's that's the sacredness in that right it's yeah well okay i got deep fast i'm sorry i just okay what does psychedelic mean to you? I just, I just really like. It's all good. Spiraled into a. Oh man. Uh, some neurons just fired on their own there. It's very similar to how you describe it, but I would, I would put it in my way for me to understand it is a disassociation from yourself, from the norm. From it's cacophony, bro. Yeah, it's totally cacophony, and it's really just taking you out of the viewpoint of I to the to the viewpoint of observing i and that's psychedelic for me is when you're in a situation where all of a sudden you're not in it you're in it but you're viewing yourself in it as opposed to being in it as a as an experiencer more as a viewer and that's that's, perfect, that's yeah. the psychedelic experience and that's that's, really what, it. that's that's how i've defined it and because i found that in multiple things non-drug related and then when i'm in the drug experience psychedelics like uh, ayahuasca which is beautiful example or whatever i get those similar avenues but a little more clear vision because i'm i'm i kind of knew what i was getting into beforehand where for example Mm. when i when i did that marathon i told you about Mm. i never really spoke about it but there was a good hour and a half maybe two hours where it was psychedelic and going by my definition i was just body was an autopilot mine fucking soaked and washed every thought pros- possible to the point where the towel was dry and i had nothing left to think about and then what happens there is the disassociation from from the ego from the body and it becomes an observer and i was literally watching myself run yeah, yeah. and i'm just like going at my pace and it was like i would say that happened about two and a half hours in two and a half hours in i did it in four hours so the hour and a half 
uh, of observing was just like this state of flow where it was thoughtless. That's awesome. And I was just watching myself. I'm like, whoa. And the whoa, the whoa definition that you gave was so relevant because I kept going and then there was a glimpse of like, oh shit, I'm not really in my body, but I'm in it. And then I just back to this flow state again. It was like a meditation. And that's what meditation is also is just separation from your thoughts as an observer. And that's psychedelic. That is my definition of it. Dude, that's perfect. I feel like what I said was like the, this, like a cause, a catalyst sort of my mm-hmm. definition. But you, yours was like a real definition or kind of a meta definition. Like it was, it's, it's yeah, man. It just that's why the term psychedelic is is perfect for these substances that we we've been mentioning in the past few podcasts. It can really be anything yeah. that interrupts your non-flow flow. Yes. You know, your beta fucking wave, like brainwave, like uh, traffic uh, paperwork yeah. brain. You know, and then. That odd feet, that oddity, like makes you suddenly aware of like your body or your space or your thoughts or something, mm-hmm. and then that that you're watching now. You're in the observer. You're put. You're you're kind of like thrust into the observer seat. That's yeah. And then uh, th- during that marathon, it was just running and like it was. I see the beauty and the and the desire for these ultra marathon runners and mm-hmm. why they do it. A lot of people will look at it from the oh, it becomes an addiction or something. Or it, like. Yeah. But it's the, I guess Maybe that's too plain a word or too. It's yeah. too. Yeah. That's too superficial. I see the becomes deeper spiritual. It becomes, that's what it comes down to. Exactly. They found their practice of, mm. of psychedelic disassociation through insane distances of running. And this is actually really cool. Cause um, I got a little glimpse of what that world is. Yeah, you, you had a satori. That, what is that? Buddhism or something? Like you had a little moment of enlightenment, a little just sip a, from the river, man. Yeah, you know, like um, like hey, turn turn here. Just like, <laughs> but it's funny because we were, we were just talking about before, like in, in the sound therapy, it's all coming from you. It's nothing. It's, it's like that. Those realizations came from within, mm. and that inner verse is it's all there. And that's what's so beautiful about it is just and that's the psychonaut is like someone exploring <laughs> themselves through new experiences yeah man and that's states. why i do these like my friends always make fun of me i do always like wild out of the out of the ordinary kind of things like uh, for example the whole marathon idea came i did a 5k mm. and i'm like fuck i like running and then my friend said oh i'm signing up for it was a client and a friend and he's like i'm signing up for the half marathon i'm like oh yeah when is that he's like september and this was probably the beginning of summer say june or uh yeah how long did you have to may. prepare again let's say may okay so he said he's doing the the montreal marathon in september mm. and i'm like oh yeah okay i'm gonna do the full one and he's like what i'm like yeah, yeah i'm gonna s- i signed up the next day he's like dude you can't do the full one you, you didn't even practice i'm like no i i see the, i see the finish line it's done i'm, I'm in and i ran maybe what t- is this word <laughs> can't oh well, the one thing about me you're you're learning is if you tell me I can't do something I fucking go ten thousand times a hundred on it to just prove you wrong yeah. and that'll be like my it's a good thing to know about except for that one time you didn't want to go to the gym and was, I and I leaned into it yeah I just like lazied you into being like oh I want to go now like this is gross <laughs> <laughs> I was like bro don't go fuck it oh. just stay home and fucking chill and and you were like no 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 <laughs> So it was that, it. and he he freaked out. He's like, "You didn't train nothing." And I ran maybe twice that whole summer for prep. I did like a five k, I did one seven k, and then I'm like, "Okay, I'm prepared." I have, I I uh, applaud your mental toughness. But what was your body in like in shape? Like, what was the shape yeah, of your body? I'll be honest, three four days was pretty brutal, and then I was back on my feet normal. You know, it was definitely with more prep on the physical plane. But like your muscle, your feet, muscles, your the skin, That's blisters, and all during that during the run, you mean? Did you have nipple guards? No, I didn't think Did I should chafe. Uh, bro. Did you chafe, bro. You know Did what I chafe? had? You know what I had the morning of? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I had the morning of to eat? I went to this bagel place. I had a bagel and cream cheese and a coffee, and I'm like, I'm fucking ready. <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking Frenchman. I but, want a croissant, and I run a marathon. <laughs> Why do you want? But that's is what it Frenchman is. Frenchman a bad thing to say? No, just sounds you bad. Just say it. Frenchman. Frenchman. <laughs> you fucking Frenchman. <laughs> but that's it. So when I understood. Yeah, it sounds bad when you say <laughs> When I understood the mechanism of what a marathon is mm. and how it's nothing to do about cardio, it's really. Well, 
Okay, look, I repeat. Pace yourself. <laughs> you need to it's have a, marathon, a you need literally. to have a base cardio. Right? You need to have your. You can't be a complete. If bullshit, you can. I forget what I'm saying. There was a. Yeah, you know right. You're going to kill some people with your advice. David like, Goggins, just for it. example. Yeah, just but did he it. wrecked his body. He wrecked his body. But what I'm saying is, times. you are He's way more capable than what you think of to do a marathon. It all comes up to what's in the head. Yeah. And well, that's that. To to David Goggins' credit, that's I. That's a thing. That's like a maxim. That's something in my head now. Hmm that I repeat often, or I try to anyway, the 40% rule. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because it's true. You think you're done, you have 60% left. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Why do I think I'm done? For all you that don't know the 40% rule, it's David Goggins, he, he said a few times that we only operate on our 40% capacity, right? Yeah. And that we our limit is on that 40%, and we think that's our 100%. But then there's this doorway you can open and there's another 60%, which is more than double of what you really can achieve, which is incredible and mind blowing because he said this on the Rogan podcast, which was fucking epic is like, even when you open that doorway, you never hit a hundred percent because a hundred percent is death. hundred percent mm. is you gave it all and you died doing it. Mm. So even when you're pushing to your max past that 40% to the 60, 70, 80, whatever, the hundred percent is giving your life for whatever you're doing. So, Think about how far you can push yourself. Let's say, let's say that one time I was at the gym and I puked and my, and my hands went numb yeah. and I needed to like sip Gatorade or else I was going to die. Like, what was that? Yeah. 70? <laughs> it's your, it's your own limits. So you should you, 75, 80, yeah. maybe, you know, it's, so that's it. So when I, when I did the prep for the run, I knew, okay, I have cardio. I'm, I'm, I'm an athlete. I've, I've trained in all of these sports. You think it would have been less psychedelic if you didn't? If you did prepare, like if you had gotten used to it, or is it just like a crazy, like you got to open that door to do a marathon, like any human at any time, except for maybe Cameron Haynes. Cause I think that's what it is. Once you, <laughs> let's say I prepped and I did it, it to get those states, you would have to do like an ultra marathon and start upping the ante because the doorway is you're kind of getting comfortable in the 70 80 percent zone yeah. and now you're like fuck i gotta go a little bit more and that's it's that why. jordan peterson the logic where it's like like comfortably challenge yourself all the time and mm -hmm. then you'll be in the flow you'll be in the and that's why so i did that marathon i'm like i like afterwards i'm like fuck okay there's something here because i just opened that door that time for this let's say 60 percent of my capacity i'm like okay i can go further in the future and do more because I, that was a good test to see how far my limit can be pushed. And that's yeah. why it was, I remember one moment in the it's run. kind of a safe way also. Like it could be very dangerous. Like well, not as safe as a lot of plant medicines, but it's like, you know, you're surrounded by people. You're just like yeah. running in a city. It was, it was crazy though, because like in that marathon, I think there was like a three deaths. Like someone what? Had, or one death. Someone had a heart attack mid run what? and died. And then there was a nine hospitalizations. Oh, wow. Well. I and guess that's normal. I, I think it was, there was a lot of heat that day, too. It was a pretty hot day, surprisingly. Well, nine out of, like, how many? Yeah, thousands of competitors. That's really... That's, that's okay, then. That's, yeah, like... I mean, it's... it's going to happen, yeah. But I remember Some the... Some fucker's going to stub his toe and, like, trip and break his teeth and shit. Like, it's just going to happen when, when you get high in the numbers like that. But the first aid team was very on edge because of all those things. So when I hit the finish line, like, I... So my psycho mind is... If you're going to finish, <laughs> if you're going to do, do it well. And at the finish line is, for me, the start and finish are the most important times. Hmm. And I tell this when I train my clients. I'm like, the last set, last rep, that's where you give it your all because that's that last bit. You know it's done right after. Mm -hmm. So the last 3K, I just started sprinting. I started going as fast as I could. <laughs> and um, the last 500 meters, I was just fucking, everything I had just let it out because I'm no the the finish line is so close that whatever i do it's over so i can just fucking go and that's where i kind of achieved the new maybe i i upped the percentage by a few so when i hit that finish line i gave it my all i collapsed like i fell against the fence i'm like <gasps> huffing and puffing and the first date like i said where they were so on edge because someone died and they're like fuck yeah, yeah so they saw me and this little asian woman i i still i've never said sorry to her if she's out there ever listening to this like i love you you're the biggest sweetheart in the world she grabbed me. She's like, sir, do you have to keep moving? Sir, do you have to keep moving? I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm pushing her off. I'm literally physically pushing her away from me. She's like, sir, no, sir, come, 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 sir. And I'm like, listen, lady, fuck off. <laughs> I'm like, I need a fucking minute. And she's like, no, no, come, come, come. And she like dragged me and I kept going. And then I walked and I, I 
I, I just fucked off from her because she couldn't stop. She wouldn't stop talking, trying to check my vitals or whatever. Yeah, she just wanted you to not like abruptly stop moving. And yeah, because in for in her defense, she's there for safety and she doesn't know who I am and she's seeing yeah, me like yeah, yeah. really fucking like huffing and puffing. So she got worried, but. I remember that, and I was just like in such a primal state. I'm like, look, it's, it's a stone. Like I'm good. I'm sure, it hurts. <laughs> Still, to this day, you're like, sorry, lady. Yeah, but it, she so knows, man. She knows. It's her job. She's <laughs> like, uh, he's, he was, he's compromised. He's in a weird <laughs> spot right now. She doesn't take it personally. Yeah, but you know what? Maybe uh, I'm still grateful for that because for the people that did need that, they're there, and that's so. Like you said about safety. I'm sure, they saved lives. Yeah, yeah, man. And then the first Those people meal have some that. psychedelic moments. Yeah. <laughs> How much time do we have left? Uh, we're good, bro. I have we no uh, concept of time. Forty minutes. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. So much time. Um, so those states, man. Mm, we can you can stretch. <laughs> those states you can achieve. Anytime you can separate yourself from you and observe, you can achieve that in anything. And we spoke yeah. about cold showers. Yeah. And like, well, it's 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 turn it's it it's like an inward vision, or it's mm. just maybe it's just any interruption, because like. I'm kind of I'm circling around this uh, this quote. I don't remember it exactly, but it's like Alan Watts saying something along the lines of like you, you don't know you don't notice. You're like you're, you don't even notice you're here until something's wrong. You know, like you're just in like a types of flow states, and like he 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 kind of tries to defend his point, saying like you don't he you don't realize you're hearing until you hear something. And you don't realize something's wrong with your ears until you have tinnitus. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's quiet. There's nothing. You and you know it's working well. That's weird. And now, now it's like if your eyes don't work well. There's spots like you're seeing things that you don't see. That's that's kind of a twist though, because you obviously could go blind and you see nothing. Yeah. But like a, his point is that there's a contrast. Like contrast is everything. There, I think when I was a kid, I, I came up with the three C's. I, I tried to break down reality into the smallest components, and it was choices, concepts, and contrast. And I, you could probably break it that, like, even more. But, yeah, it's, like, what we choose to do. Like, our ability to discern and to mm. choose, and that's through concepts. Anyway. And when that gets disrupted, that's where there's, like, this whole new level of a uh, new viewpoint, a vantage point of, like, oh, shit. Kind yeah. of like a well, white noise it, in You the need background. contrast or you else you have don't like know a, you're, you were ever in one state. You need to see the other state. Anyway. You ever notice when that. you're, <laughs> let's say you're in a room and there's a white noise, a fan in the background or the AC and sure. then it goes off and then you're like, Ooh. there's a void. You're like, well, okay. Yeah. There's, there's, I was so used to that sound and now boom, disruption. Uh, because the brain adapts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's, we, I, so we're really breaking the mechanism down. It's cool. The brain just needs to do that. Mm -hmm. Like I remember one time I was, I had this like um, counseling or therapy or something after the Dawson shooting. And uh, I was talking to this woman for so long. And I was just staring at her and I, it was comfortable. And like I, my, because my eyes didn't move for so long and it was the same image for so long, everything just started fading black. My brain just started turning my eyes off because it was the same information over and over. Hmm. It just said, whatever. Like you don't feel your ass on the seat until I talk about it. Mm -hmm. you, you can feel gravity if you fucking listen hard enough, you know, but like you, you don't feel the glasses on your face or the fucking, you don't notice your breathing, like all that jazz. We got fucking things on our head, you know, mm -hmm. like we just forget about it. Yeah. Your brain is beautiful at adapting and that's bad it, for, 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 a, for like a, any kind of for the, the spiritual journey. It's just like, it's like you're, you're done already, which is actually the, maybe that's the truth. Maybe that's the best <laughs> spiritual journey. It's just like, you're there already, whatever. I don't know. But that's, that's why I'll, like getting caught up in momentum and let's say you're in a stressful time or whatever your brain mm. will adapt in that sense too and you won't even realize you're stressed you'll just you'll feel like oh this is how i'm operating now and then when you get a disruption like a ice the cold shower well holy fuck where is this, all these emotions coming from and yeah. then you're the breathing the heavy breathing we did at the ayahuasca ceremony yeah, the breath work session yoga and massage mm. fuck man when you when you, you feel like good psychedelic after, man i always have this guilty mo i'm like oh my god i just like i'm I, I can hear it in my brain. I'm almost like apologizing to my body. I'm just like, what the fuck was, have I been doing? There you go. I could be at this level of relaxation. See, we get Crazy. used to it. We get used to that white noise in the background. And mm -hmm. then when it's lifted, it's like, There's holy fuck, who is yeah. this person? Yeah. And it, that Crazy. comes down to massage, bro. I have sometimes, I have clients where I treat them and I'm not even doing 
there's no specific injury or anything. It's just I need a massage. It's like a child, like something's wrong and the child needs some guidance but doesn't know where to go. We even uh, kind of learned that, you know, like there's a specific like therapeutic massage for, for an injury, let's say, and then there's a global relaxation massage. They even just call it that. And what does that mean? That means it means I'm gonna fucking touch you all nice, and then your body is gonna not have a choice to go into parasympathetic, and you are gonna be healing, mm. and that's what that's what shavasana is. Yes. That's what r- true rest is. You're not reading a book. You're not talking to your friend. You don't. You're not sipping wine and watching Netflix because you're agitated. When the guy gets shot on the screen, you feel that, even though you don't feel that. You feel that, you know. But if you fucking sink for real, fuck man, your yeah. body restores. Wow. You can if you actively rest for like fifteen minutes, it's equivalent to more than a thirty minute nap where you actually sleep and REM and everything. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you'd REM there. It depends on your sleep cycles. Well, that's that's it. Rapid though. eye movement. Everyone knows what that is. I don't yeah. have to explain that. Yeah, no, People I'm are so much smarter than they used to be. It's amazing. It's if we're cyborgs. Uh, I think Ray Kurzweil said that we have, or Elon Musk said it. We have the fucking. The all the information at our fingertips. We're literally it's an extension of our brain. These phones. A hundred percent. Well, it's a um, it's like symbiotic because we have to input all the information. Or I guess for now, yeah. There's a lot of AI doing it now, but like we are forgetting a lot more and just mm-hmm. relying on it. So it's like this weird new way to exchange info, and I think it it's just an interesting direction that the human species is going in. It's very psychedelic as well, <laughs> just phones and technology and, and oh seeing history in like a, a singular context, seeing like where we come from. I love those examples where if you brought the phone to and like... Where we're going. <laughs> if you brought like a cell phone, if you can go back in time to like the 1300s, the 1400s, and you just showed a cell phone. <laughs> yeah, but all those conversations end with they break it open and take the minerals or something <laughs> like because there's no cell towers or like you can't explain it to them anyway. Like you can maybe yeah. kind of show them how to use it, and then they're going to be like, "Why do I need this?" But no one else has a phone point is in that this, time. This comes into full circle because <laughs> we've white noised these phones and taken it for for what it is. We kind of accepted it without really looking into it. They're not, yeah, they're not white noise though. They're infrared hmm. or infrasound. Like they're infrared. They're infrasound. They're like they're hurting us, but we don't hear it. We we think it's something else, but it's like the thing. Yeah. The thing is fucking with you. My <laughs> eyes are fucking screwed because i'm looking at a screen that's close to me all the time my elbow hurts because i'm holding the screen all the time my this my that fucking uh a calcified bump on the back of the neck from tilting your head downwards Mm -hmm. staring at your phone like i don't know man you gotta get those pop sockets and just like like use your you know you hold it like more up (laughs) either way you You look like a fucking retard how many (laughs) times do you catch yourself staring down at your phone if you really put attention awareness that it's all the time my brother's funny because he gives into it He's mm. not on his phone like a lot, but when he is, he just fucking like he just yeah. does like the <laughs> his chin hits the the chest, and he's like, "I'm stretching." What? <laughs> yeah, I'm like that's, he's a genius. That's crazy, man. So just com- bringing this back to the 1300s, a cell phone. How psychedelic would it be for them to see it for the first time? Like, what the fuck? This is God stuff. Well, but, uh, Rogan touched on it. Like, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but like they, yeah. they would just be amazed by the smoothness. It's just the dimensions, mm. you know. It's like, what the fuck. And what the capabilities, though, the lighting and just the fact that you can turn into a flashlight. Think about it in the 13, 1400s where there was no light bulbs and you can just show a flashlight in your hand. That'd and, be terrifying. A but bit. we take all this for granted <laughs> because it's just we're in this era and we're just used to it. <laughs> yeah. But it's, if you disassociate it from an observer point of view, it's very fucked up. It's fun. to. That's why I like the yugas also in yoga because it's like they think of human like, I don't know, like the kind of the 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 cycle that we go through in terms of our like success and failure as a, as like a civilization in chunks of like 14,000 years or something like that you know you would tell me about the yugas and, uh, i don't know much about it but like there's chunks the, of this, prosperity this, and, this phase we're in right now it was oh uh, it's argued but like yeah. we i think we just got out of the kali yuga which was like the the bad one and then we're actually rising into like that causes the Amazon to burst into flame. I'm, I'm, I'm oversimplifying, you know, but like yeah, the problems right. of today are becoming glaring is what I mean. Mm. And a lot of people are reacting, even though there's a lot of misinformation. That's part of it is there's the reactions, the protection of the, the broken system because mm. the people who rely on it and not being spiritual and not accepting the fact that they're actually like terminating their species. If they're, if they're 
like that's retarded right that's mm. crazy so uh th- we're 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 coming up we're nice. there's a there's a age of enlightenment coming. the cocoon is uh cracking open yeah people just can't take it anymore that mm. that's you know the, the i don't remember a lot of people have talked about this before me but there's this thing about like a reluctant hero and that reluctance f- breaks eventually a lot of us a lot of people are clear on the fucking side we're on we take no uh, pleasure or comfort in, in identifying as evil and the people who do don't either they just they're just down on themselves uh, but or they're very deluded they don't even think they're evil like that's kind of the real evil is the ignorance but yeah the you we have to do something eventually like people people just rise up and the, and it's the it's the time also because it's a it's a cycle like a circle but it's more of a spiral so it does evolve as well it's it does move forward, forward. Yeah. and it's we're not in the age of like einsteins and and like or like the, like heroes you know like there's the, the big names are kind of gone mm. they are and they aren't you know but it's kind of it's being propped up it's being kept alive it's on life support the the time of gurus is kind of gone and everyone needs to wake the fuck up because a lot of us have a lot of individual power mm-hmm. and the the group power is the collect crazy power. now yeah. yeah we can it is touch power. mars and beyond and co- maybe colonize them like th- th- those are even just cool space things but yeah. it's like we can look what we did to the earth yeah. i mean like from a, like it's horrible obviously but from an objective completely objective point of view imagine you're like a space alien and it's like it's like the fascination when you watch like maggots eat a fox corpse and fast forward or something you're like what the fuck is that yeah that's nature that's insane dude that's, that's just bonkers i i had a um like i was i was doing a lot of thinking about space and all that kind of stuff and just deep appreciation to think about we got a footprint on the moon like as a species what an accomplishment if you really break it down like we've left this planet had a footprint on the moon hmm. And we've like set our our limits. We we're just like hitting maybe fifty percent of our capacity as a collective, or maybe we're not even at the forty percent yet. But we put I a can't footprint. even imagine that like you can't know the hundred yeah. percent. It's just cool to see the edges. The, yeah, the edges we're are just, crazy. We're setting different parameters. Like, okay, we have, we've did this. Now the next step is to colonize Mars, mm. and then after Mars, how many hundreds of years or recent years? Who knows how long it's going to take? But then what's after that? Colonizing and Mars apparently is really stupid and really hard. Well, Elon Musk is the front lo- front runner for that whole thing. He wants to go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he does. He's he's good at publicity. Uh, you know, he's not an idiot, not at all. That's uh, true. But his I'm but I know what you mean. It's just it's fascinating. Like there, there's like there's, there's always an edge to explore. And it even kind of gives you tunnel vision because I I feel like I have this like uh, bubbling, there's this thought sort of like we could even do better. Like I am amazed, but I'm also kind of like, I feel like as a species, obviously we're very distracted. We're like an anthill that's not even like good at being an anthill. You know, we're like destroying the anthill a little bit. Like we're, we're weird, but, but that's, it's like a... I'm, I'm picturing a utopia for no reason, you know, like it's just not what humans do. And that's another kind of cool thing about the Cali, like the Yugas. Whoops. I always make a circle gesture when I say Yugas. I'm Italian. I have to talk with my hands. <laughs> I just knock the microphone into my face. It's all good. Anyway, rant complete. Just fucking devi- like deviating a lot. What else is psychedelic? Or did you have other things to say about what we were just talking about? No, oh, I just, if if you really observe anything, it can be psychedelic. We're just going into technology and, and the wor- the direction the human, the human race is going is psychedelic. If you really futurism yeah. or, or like a, studying history, it's crazy to, to see in detail or in the macro also, like just how we work in a kind of basic yeah. sense. And, you know, you, we spoke briefly about breath work and, um, and uh, the yoga and that kind of stuff. And it's just from sitting down and breathing, taking you said 60 breaths in just um in very conscious aware breathing that even if it isn't it's just the just the act right yeah that in itself is separation because you're you're focusing your attention very to a very small section of your body of just your breath Mm. and you're observing that pete holmes is like a stand-up comedian and he talks about he has a great bit 
it's fucking amazing actually you know because he's he's talking about how cool life is and how weird it is essentially having the same like the this like he's talking about the same thing we're talking about and he goes like hey everyone do me a favor everyone here just to prove his point of like how weird life is he's like just check if you need to pee and he just like (laughs) like gives like he just pauses and then does like a kind of like slapstick like body like his body moves because he checks like and he's like what was that (laughs) like he's like he's like seriously what did we just all do (laughs) like like you you kind of have this video game and you're playing from the eyes and you have a hand you have hands and legs and then you you just kind of like send a fucking piece of your consciousness like spelunking down into your body and you're like it's good you know like he checks he like he like oil dips you or something and then comes back up and you're like nope don't need to be wow. you know like yeah. the, he just breaks it down and you're like what the fuck is life man <laughs> and that's that's like not not to go crazy about it, but like that's the main reason I think meditation is really, or like certain types of meditation are really psychedelic is because it's something about body awareness. Mm. And we realize like the, the normal, the, like the normal, the normal things we pay attention to are very limited mm. and we can just kind of open the, the shutter to get more light. We can just kind of our focus. I don't know how useful that is all the time because you're, you might be like very spread thin. I don't know what to, how to put it, mm. but like you, there's so much, you could be feeling at any given time with a fun practice, you know, mm. like I, I, you can call it yoga, but you can call, you can almost call anything yoga. Like if you really, if you play with the definition, but there's, yeah. the, there's this, there's this fun ability to, I think a lot of people, if you, if you want to call them psychonauts, they've done something like that where they, they expand their awareness. They start looking at their peripheral vision while like they're, they're focusing on something and they start looking on the outside. Mm. They start hearing everything they can hear and not listening to anything specific. They start opening that lens it's like a fun game you play with yourself. You're like, what can my body do? And I, I, there's another comedian actually said something. It's like everyone here got high when they were kids and they didn't realize it. But that's what you were doing when you were spinning around in a circle. You were just like looking for another state. Yeah. And then you, you were dizzy and it's like your entire experience is weird. You're like, I'm not moving, but I'm moving. What the that's, fuck's going on? And that's like the first time you ever got high. That's like, uh, that's hilarious because the Sufis... That's their meditation. I didn't make that connect. That's crazy. It's That's just, insane. They yeah. spin for hours, man. Yeah. And talking about non-drug induced experiences, I can throw a few off the bat. It's the Sufis doing the hours of spinning until they achieve those those altered states of of being. But what is the altered state? It comes right back to what we we're saying: is disassociation from yourself. Mm. And the altered state itself. Yeah, like we were saying before it's the catalyst and then you notice the difference and there's mm. that contrast and that's the psychedelic yes thing, is yeah. like oh like like you that like we always say oh or whoa or wow or something <laughs> it's, it's like even when i was that. talking about the when i was on shrooms and i saw that that spider whoa. <laughs> yeah just, whoa it just came out of me it felt so good it was like in the diaphragm i just really released some air and i was like <laughs> i was fucking amazed yeah 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 maybe psychedelic maybe maybe it's a there's a quality of amazement. You're just, you're taken astonishment, back, right? Literally it's it's popped out of your body. You're like, Whoa, I'm, he, I'm here having this experience. That's how com- cool the experience, how com- palpable the experience is. that you have to notice it. You have to step back anyway. And what comes with amazement is gratitude, you know, appreciation. Yeah, it c- well, I think that's might be a practice. It could be a type of person. It could mm-hmm. turn into a certain, you could turn anything into like a guilt and regret. And that's true. Yeah. It's just a mood, I guess. But yeah, that's a window. It's a door to that, and you can turn left or right. I guess I'm sure it's a, hmm. it's 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 definitely a lot easier to feel gratitude to be just like shocked at, you know, like cold water. I go in my pool. It's just water. It's just like a thing I do every day. But now because the temperature's lower, my body's reacting to it. You break it down in a way that's like kind of oversimplified, and then and then uh, the response that I have is like uh, an, a cra- like a hugely enhanced mood like for a day like mm. it's not a it lasts you know and 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 the high during also it's even kind of dangerous because it's like you're literally you could be hypothermic mm. i i did i told you that story i did like 30 laps one day instead of 20 and i got out and my hands were like curled mm. and i couldn't really move them yeah and i was like oh you know and i st- i still like i had like a numbness for i might have had a small 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 amount of nerve damage because yeah. it was like too cold for too long and maybe not maybe it's just a, a reaction that happens or something but I felt it for a while after like yeah. the it's that's a high for sure. That's a high. Cause I'm not even, I'm not noticing stuff. 
but but the feeling after the feeling during it's all during after all of the above when you put yourself in a state where you have to accept and separate yeah right? and it's it's not necessarily heightened that's what proves your point it's just the contrast because mm -hmm. meditation is the opposite of that you take away all the stimuli mm -hmm. it's usually by reduction right you're reducing 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 until there's just pure awareness left because in the cold shower you, you there's only so much thoughts that you can can have in the moment before you have to give in right there yeah maybe the shock moments are psychedelic in a different way they do knock you out or knock you in let's say but when you start getting used to it there is a definite there, that's a that's the place mm -hmm. when you're when you're feeling the cold and you're not like i'm cold you're not you're not, not making a story it. about it yeah. you're you're just feeling it yeah it's something else and you could be still shivering or uncomfortable but, you're, but you're your not, mind is not there yeah there isn't the extra story like the oh like because i'm cold i'm uncomfortable i don't like being uncomfortable like all these little blah, 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 all these little attachments that are, just aren't happening i think and the next moment comes and the next moment comes and you're just observing i think cold showers and the cold therapy in general is amazing to give people glimpses of the psychedelic experience because it's so abrupt and it's so quick and if you can get past that mental barrier of panic and uh, i'm cold and all that chatter and when you can get past that that line mm then there's like a nice door you can open where it's <laughs> holy fuck yeah what is this i'm I, ha I agree with you but in a, some weird way i feel like i have an easier time drinking that c that fucking cup <laughs> than i do jumping in the pool like i i if i don't do it quickly it becomes this anticipation and then i don't want to go in and like it becomes That's horrible hard. i take that back it's fucking hard man why it's weird there's this shock moment you just want to get over like, fuck i've had like existential crises because i'm like <laughs> Like I'm standing there and I'm having this realization that I like I'm like I want to already be in the pool and there's this anticipation that's growing and making me uncomfortable and and um and it's like I have to like walk myself through this like Buddhist fucking understanding of the universe and be like I'm the I'm I need to kill my current self and experience the cold it's and tough. then the person that comes out after is is like different is like a yeah. reborn part of me and I'm having this continuum of experience. <laughs> And I just start paying attention while I like I jump into the water and I'm slow motioning it. And there's this shock and it knocks me out of my concentration. No matter how hard I try to hold on to it, there's just a new experience. And I can't be the guy who wasn't in the water before. And then I see this tunnel of experience happening. And all this because I don't want to jump into a cold pool. Like, what yeah. the fuck, bro? For the listeners. What the fuck? <laughs> for the listeners, I think if you want to start... Um, opening your mind up to, to to those kind of spaces in the psychedelic world do five minutes meditation the, breathing yeah. technique cold yeah. shower yeah. cold shower you could do 10 seconds mm. but if you slam it all the way to the cold especially if you're in Canada and it's yeah. just like getting real yeah. like the fucking water gets cold so there, there's many types of people the ones that go head first feet first and kind of dip their toes and take their time and the other don't one. do that so just knock if it you cold can, if you think you have fast. the mental <laughs> the fortitude to do five minutes at full blast cold, I will do it. I usually do it anyway. But no, nah, but I wouldn't say mental fortitude. Like it I would does say, require, though, man. no, not if you do the Wim Hof breathing technique properly. Mm. I don't f like the first few seconds, or let's say thirty plus seconds. So it sucks a little bit. Getting the air in is is well, you need to be. Ha, ha, you know, I you, mean the, the fortitude. The fortitude is the prep right before. That's what I was trying to get at. Yeah, you got to just do it. But that's why I like my method. <laughs> it's just like you're in the shower. You have a nice, long, hot shower like you usually do or whatever the fuck. Yeah. But just you know you're going to survive. You know yeah. you're going to be okay. Mm. This is only good for you. There's nothing this could do bad for you. If anything, it's good for your skin to end on a cold. It's good for your hair. And just slam it and then go, yeah. oh, no, fuck this and close it. The exactly. next time, just take a breath. The time after that, take fucking two yeah. breaths. Then, like, once you get up to five, six breaths, or just count thirty seconds yes. and and walk, like like spin in a circle, like like a rotisserie if yeah. it's really too cold. But just get there slowly, like yoga. Just ease into the effort. Just all, mm. find that edge, like we talked about earlier, yeah. like that Jordan Peterson in the zone flow thing. If it's really too cold, fucking don't go, don't slam it. But make sure you just do it and have fun with it because it feels amazing. It's a high. Yeah. It is. But this is what I love about that is to, if you've never done any psychedelic drugs or anything like that and you do these cold things, your mantra could be that you know it's going to end, you know it's good for the body and at it's just full a control you can turn that knob off and end that experience right whenever there. Whenever you want. Whenever the fuck you want. And with that, that is a mantra, great 
Do you have drug. that fucking mantra? You can really, okay, I know I'm full control of this whole experience. I can shut it off anytime. I, I, didn't, I didn't think of that. Dude. Like when, when people take shrooms for the first time, I always tell you're them in. like, no, no, but I tell them yeah. if you feel like you're, you're, you're not having a good time, I don't like want to say something wrong, but I just go, look, you're in control, man. Yeah. Uh, just eat something. It'll kill the buzz. And then I, I think someone said, I don't know if it's a myth, but like if you drink orange juice or something stupid like that, it myth. kills the buzz. I think I tried it's it. It's a myth. It didn't work. But eating anything, you're going to diminish yeah. your buzz. Or you're gonna, that's why you say that. Or a cold shower. <laughs> during the mushroom experience, we'll get rid of it. <laughs> but Quite sobering. Yeah, yeah. rapé and, co- yeah. and cold showers <laughs> you're are you're, you're normal yeah. again. But yeah. that's the beauty of it. So when you want to start testing your, your lines, your mental lines and your, your barriers and the walls you've created, we said, spoke about it many times in the podcast that we're wall builders. And we're just adding these bricks and we're building these walls that hold our child or fragile self in, mm-hmm. encompassed in this, in this capsule that we've created to just keep us safe. Mm-hmm. And when you want to start taking out bricks, when you do things like the cold shower for 10 seconds, 10 breaths, one breath, two breaths, five seconds, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. Maybe that's vulnerability is like mm. a recipe, and part of this recipe. Yeah. That's it. Some people operate well off can be completely vulnerable, one shot, fucking go. And some people ease into it. And they're both great methods. There's not one better than the other. But that's you just techni- got to know yourself. Yeah. See which one you're actually going to do. I kind of downplay. I do it the opposite. I go max and then to work backwards. Whereas some people start easy and then they work to max. So it's just... I yoga it, but like you said, there really are a bunch of ways to... There's yeah. many roads to the same place. So, so don't take our word for it. Go into the shower, do the... Set a goal. Say two two breaths, five breaths, whatever it is. Play with it. And then you can dance around that knob over there's and no over There's no excuse again. is what we're trying to say. Yeah. Like in a, in a nice way, we're trying to say there's really no excuse. Yeah. Like this is good for you. It's awesome. If you want to try, don't be afraid. I mean, we're not saying do it even if you don't want to. Like... There, there's benefits to it, but you have to kind of believe in those benefits. Mm-hmm. You have to research Wim Hof and yeah. his breathing technique and why it works, why it's good for your immune system. The cold shower shocks you. It, 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 it makes your immune system react. You, the breathing technique does some weird thing that I don't understand, but it, it over-oxygenates you and, and mixed with the cold shower greatly reduces yes. inflammation. And like, there's times when I'm sick. First of all, I'm never sick. I am never fucking sick. There's wow. people who get sick four times a year and I'm just like, whatever. I I got sick recently once or twice because I started working at a hospital and I got a few new things, I guess. Some super bugs. Exactly. But I fucking never get sick, man. Nice. But it, like, if I do, I do the breathing technique. I feel better faster. Yeah. I do it if I'm hungover. I do it if I'm jet lagged. Nice. I do it in the morning sometimes Reboot just to wake up, then. whether I'm in the cold shower or not. But the but the retentions in those in that breathing technique... I, the second retention when you breathe in for the like you breathe out you hold and you breathe in anyway I'm not going to explain the breathing technique just google Wim Hof you but can go into it briefly if you want it's it's 30 deep inhalations you try to really softly release the exhalation but you can you just yeah. you do that 30 times you're going to get exhales. a little yeah, yeah. big yeah. inhales, short exhales. You do that about you do that thirty times. That and you but do it a rhythm. You, you do it as a you round. Can't stop the the circulation. You got to keep going with it. <sighs> yeah, yeah. You find your well. You, you it's like any breathing technique. You got to practice. It's yeah. just weird at first, and you got to find the rhythm. You got to see other people do it. You, yeah. you got to know what the feeling is you're trying to achieve as well, because some people might not be breathing in enough. And anyway, I don't want to get into about Wim Hof. He's like, just fucking breathe. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's what he, he came He's like, down don't to. There's no real it. fucking technique. Just breathe, because he knows there's people like me who who are like, oh, do we do like this? Do we do like mm. that? And it's like, just fucking try. You know, I, yeah. I, in my lineage, in my yoga lineage, uh, they always say uh, an ounce of practice is worth a ton of theory. Mm. That is just like just shut up and dance, man. Nice. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. So when you get in the cold shower, the essence of how you get through it is breathing. However you do it. Oh yeah, that was te- my point. Is yeah. In the retention, I didn't ever finish it. You don't feel the cold. Mm-hmm. It's fascinating. You just don't feel. You feel it, but you're not cold. You're not reacting to it. It's just yeah. like you're, you're not f- shivering anymore. Like you're, a lot of it, it doesn't. Is your, even, it really doesn't feel cold to me. I don't know. Uh, I never asked human. you. Yeah. Well, so cool. was was Simon? Uh, you met him a few times. Yeah. Uh, we, oh yeah, you guys had some stories of like uh, amazing man. Cold ice. We used uh, to go quite often, weekly, to the Scandinavian spa. Yeah, yeah. near your house there, Finlandes. And we'll go sometime. Oh, we always say it, let's go soon. When it starts getting colder, it's the best time to go. Dude, come over. I have a bow and arrow. Fuck. Arrows. I have a sauna. I have the pool is freezing right now. Talk about psychedelic. That's all the elements that can create. We'll do some rapping in my backyard. We'll go. We'll go walk in a forest. I have access to a forest island. 
Oh my just God. next to my house I discovered this year is fucking beautiful. Anyway, okay. I got to make it a wasting point. podcast time. I got to make it come over. <laughs> come to my house, man. Let's hang out. Maybe I'll come Sunday. We'll see. Uh, we'll talk about it. Oh, well, my people will talk to your people. Yeah. Uh, well, Jamie set that up. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie pulled that up. We just did three hours. <laughs> there should so, be like a, <laughs> just a JRE soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> we just did three hours. Um, but what I was getting to, we were at the spa, and we built up to this. But we, they have the cold bath there. The hot, they have a huge hot bath, cold bath, saunas, steam rooms. It's a beautiful spa. Everyone who's been to a spa knows it. Most spas have very similar stuff. We were in the wintertime. We went in the cold bath, and I kid you not, we did 45 minutes. Probably wow. longer. That's bonkers. And when we got in there, we both s- stared at each other in like complete awareness, just staring each other in the eyes, going like it's... <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> and for those who who are not seeing this because we didn't videotape it uh, <laughs> thank god um we were on the inhale we would squeeze our entire body so yeah you're like that's why i laughed because you're like lifting shoulders your shoulders up high, <laughs> and then exhale drop the body and release tension <sighs> it probably lets you get bigger breaths because yeah. like you're gonna lift. oh yeah and we're, we're working with their anatomy so when the when the shoulders raise the rib cage gets pulled open the lung capacity because it's all on uh What's the fucking mechanism? It's on, uh, fuck, I know this. Uh, I don't remember. Like reverse that. pressure or whatever. Yeah, it's, like it's a reverse pressure. So your lungs don't actually expand. It's the space that lets them grow into it. They're yeah. like trying to get bigger the whole time. It's just that your ribs are are compressing them. So the more you can open the rib cage, the bigger your inhales will be naturally. So by lifting your shoulders, even this is a little bit off topic, but if you're tired after a workout, just put your hands up behind your head and li- leave your elbows open. Just that alone will allow you to take bigger breath because you're pulling your pecs, which pull the the the, the top five ribs, mm. which will allow for more lung capacity. So, like I was saying, even naturally, like if you just take really deep breaths, you'll notice at the end you like your clavicle flexes and like you 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 instinctively upwards. lift your yes. your rib cage up. So that's a good technique to think about in the cold shower. So in the in the hot in the ice bath, we were doing that kind of breathing, and we we're kind of hopping on our feet on our toes. Like a, like a Taekwondo stance, just like, like <laughs> bouncing, you know? And then it turned into katas. For those who've done karate when they were younger, ka- I don't even know katas. I was just like... But you're like waving, you're moving your hands around. Like doing like punches. Like back and forth in a just horse like, stance. Yeah, like, and like, like ha, whoo, and every punch we'd exhale and we're just... Pu- da- and then we were just doing kicks and kicks and then deadlifts and squats and we're just moving and breathing. That's and awesome. then before you know it, we were just staring at each other and we're like, whoa. Like, we we're breathing now? normal. <laughs> 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 we're we're like we're breathing normal now and we're just staring at each other eye contact totally fucking eye contact which is hilarious but we're staring at each other like whoa what's Sorry. up bro he's like what's up i'm like i'm good you he's like i'm fucking good <laughs> and we're just talking a normal conversation in the fucking ice but people are looking i i my peripheral vision they were looking like okay and they came back like what the fuck are they still doing in there yeah and we're just talking to each other full-on conversation sammy that's crazy normal as fucking day and then there was moments where the shiver came back i'm like oh fuck it's back <laughs> i do that for 30 <laughs> seconds Bite it. and i'm back yeah, and we did that over and over again the cycle, and I'm telling you, it had to be longer I've than never 45 minutes. Tried to do it that way because Try. I what I do is a few rounds at the top, mm. and then I feel good, and then I just start kind of like swimming, or if it's cold shower. I might keep doing it, but then I'll just do like three rounds and try to get the fuck out of there. I don't think I've ever gone past like five rounds. Okay, because then you're in there for like five right. minutes. We gotta minutes. hang out then, because I'm gonna take you there. Wow, it's it's like you just do it as as needed. <laughs> yeah, so you so you you kind of recalibrate. You're normal. The you're normal. Then it's it's decalibrated, and then you breathe, and you're back to the calibration. And but you the can movement's big. Apparently, like a lot of the cryo p- therapy places there, like they throw you on a bicycle after or something. Yeah. Like it's good for you to move after. Get the circulation going. Yeah, right? like you don't don't hop in a hot shower or a sauna. Like end on cold all the time if you're doing hot cold mm. therapy like that. I'm sure there's benefits to both. I don't know, but getting your body having to get back to its temperature on its own yeah. is a is a added benefit. So the physiological effect of of that idea is because when you go into the cold, what happens on the on the cell on the blood level of the circulation level is all the blood leaves your extremities. It, in evolution, it's genius. It doesn't need your arms and legs to survive. It needs your organs and your heart and your everything internal in the in the abdomen and the torso. Mm. So. It's normal that you get cramped up. It's literally because there's no circulation happening in your fingers. They've got retracted back to what's important. Yeah, that's it. I didn't have nerve damage. Like no, no, my was fingers just, would have to be black yeah, or something. No, it's really maybe some some level the nerves were a little bit 
but, but I, nothing was blue. No. I mean, maybe the hands a little bit, but like you're, when I walk barefoot in the snow and shit, my feet turn red. Yeah, exactly. They start getting hot. It's fucking cool. So it's that's like it. a mental game. You have to like ignite your skin <laughs> sort of like. So that's it. So when you do the movement, you're kind of creating more blood flow. And when you're in the cold and just try like tense and punch, tense and punch. Yeah. I find katas in, in the cold is incredible, man. Because you really yeah. tense and then release, tense and release, tense and release. And then that just speeds up the fucking process where you can stay in exponentially longer than just standing and breathing. Yeah. And so we were you're doing that. that blood to pump, man. That's we're doing that, man. And the level we can achieve of awareness was so fucking beautiful. And just feeling everything, feeling then, I remember that 45 minutes, we started feeling, oh, fuck, my my hip is tight. Why is it so tight? And then I would just do a few kicks and circles with that hip, and they would release. I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, okay, my, my, my arm is a little bit tense. And then I'd do, like, some bicep curls and then extend and, like, really stretch. We started doing yoga, too. We're doing, like, fucking sun salutations, but <laughs> reaching as high as you can. From the observer, awesome. people are like, what are these fucking guys on, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but... I remember there was a crowd after just staring at us like, dudes, you guys are, how the fuck did you do that? And we're like, just breathe. <laughs> just do breathe what? Through it. Do it. <laughs> exactly. Oh, is that cold? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny. Just off. <laughs> the essence of our podcast was psychedelic experiences through, without the psychedelic substance. And we, we dance around cold well, I showers guess, a lot. Yeah, which, which, for sure. Yeah. It's, yeah it's, but I, I'm, I guess it's endogenous chemicals, you know, like it's, it's nothing very different than what we're I guess it is very different in terms of the, the molecule, but it's like you're you're you are high, like you are doing something. Yeah, like it's a, it's kind of like a. There's nowhere to go there though. It's just kind of interesting to think about it. Like, you're just having a reaction that's creating a surplus of some native drug in your fucking brain. And, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, cold shower is big. That, yeah. I'm thinking like, what else is a a big thing? You know what's fun to think about? We don't have to get into it. But like uh, a lot of animals get high. It's, it's really true. funny to think we about. We should get into that in a different podcast because I don't even the puffer know all fish the... for dolphins, yeah. which is fucked up. There's some kind of cougar or like cheetah that chews like a, a plant also and it just trips oh out. Oh my God. We got to talk about that one day because I saw a video. Uh, I think it was, a, was it a jaguar like, or They're or like staring cheetah? at the stars and like tripping out. He was out. eating yeah. this fucking plant <laughs> and know, it was literally that, high as a fuck, just staring, staring around, looking around. And I'm like, what else? Uh, Damn, I've I've straight up seen monkeys smoke weed, but that that, that shouldn't count. I sent you a video. That was <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> that was so mind blowing. Like I saw a lot of comments yeah. like this animal cruelty, blah blah. blah. If you take I kind of that... feel that way. Yeah, it's like it's like when like I don't I hate catnip. I hate the concept of catnip. People are like, oh, it's, it's a funny. substance, right? It's uh, it gets them high. Yeah, but it's like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like it's like nurses that it's like hospitals they 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 give you more they give you um uh, ketamine like i was saying in the Just other podcast keep you from, uh, it's like oh it's a painkiller it's like yeah it all, you're also tripping the fuck out <laughs> like you're in it's not just a anyway it just bugs me man it's like if someone dopes you like if someone like like tosses an ecstasy into your glass it's like even if you would take ecstasy there's something just like what the fuck about that like <laughs> just get put it in my hand don't yeah. fucking bomb me with a a, a trip <laughs> yeah but um, i don't know i'm i'm i hate change you know, I said it at the yeah. beginning before we were recording, yeah. so you can't oh, just. I'm gonna pose the bear, man. Well, just don't, just don't put an XT in my drink, and we'll, <laughs> we'll be good. Slip some LSD in your in your water. <laughs> if it's you, all you might you might thank me for that uh, six hours later. <laughs> in the moment, you'll be upset, <laughs> dude. I had fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to call in sick, bro. I wanted to say. Uh, Imagine you just call in high. You're like, yeah, man. My friend slipped me LSD. I, I can't come into work today. <laughs> But what the fuck? Uh, You're fired. I saw a video. This guy's dog was was running in the forest, like just doing his own thing. And then I think it found mushrooms and it ate it. Whoops. And then he filmed his dog. Like he said, oh, fuck, my dog just ate mushrooms. I don't know what's going to happen. And then like an hour passed and he filmed the dog. And the dog was just like on all fours. Like his body was moving with gravity a little bit, staring at him with his mouth panting. But like his eyes were wider than usual. And he was just like staring for like 30 minutes. And he's like, you okay, buddy? You okay? <laughs> I'm so like, what the fuck is that dog thinking about? <laughs> That's a little scary to picture. Like, cause like I, I'll try to find you that video. It's but like, isn't like, I just kind of imagine the scene that you described. And it's like, what if this, like, it's a dog, it's a wild animal. Like it's, I know it's very domesticated, but like, they're they can be aggressive and it's like this guy's this guy's tripping right now (laughs) 
you know i've seen some people scream and flip around on yeah. on salvia or something like i don't know what this dog going <laughs> through it was only a, about a 40 second clip so i don't know what the aftermath but it was like the moment from, from at least from that clip it was like that dog came to a realization that it's a dog <laughs> that's what it looked like and it was just deep in thought process it's like, like why is he always wait a second <laughs> the fuck am i <laughs> which is I would love to get into this in the future podcast, the Stone Ape Theory, which is uh, for me is a fascinating one to dance around. Not much fact behind it. Well, we we we're gonna have fun bringing up like uh, McKenna. And, like, we haven't brought we'll have, him up yet. But it's, like, you remember, I had that idea. Like, the like we'll have a podcast mm, where we just like talk about a bunch of dead guys. Yeah. yeah, I think you could spend fucking year talking about the beauties of <laughs> Terrence McKenna. You know, I'm so, I hate to go backward. I hate to backpedal, but like the the you were talking about the dog realizing he's a dog like there's another i don't know why i'm just thinking of the stand-up jokes like random <laughs> jokes are coming to mind but this one guy said like imagine like he saw a horse standing in a field of of cows and i forget all the like, the names of the comedians whatever but like he, he's like what i wonder if that like that horse thinks it's a cow because it doesn't see other horses and he's like why is the farmer always riding me <laughs> like he's just mad you know like, but he doesn't know he's a horse oh that's great oh fuck that was funny. I think that we're down, we're out in time. But one last thing, um, I think there was a video. This cow followed like a, a a pack of bulls or whatever you call us. What is it? A pack of bulls? Herd. A herd of bulls, like from a young age, and it it just chilled with them. It, it thought it was. I think it escaped the farm, and it ended up living with this pack of bulls, and it kind of accepted them in. It was the weirdest thing. I'm gonna try to find that. I know it briefly, but it was. It like adapted to the pack and uh, the herd, and they they let it in. <laughs> Some weird shit, man. Fucking weird. Anyways, brother. Okay, we gotta wrap it up. You said. Yeah, we gotta wrap it up. Um, All right. Shorter podcast, but we we got to what we wanted to talk about. I mean, there's yeah, so much more. Maybe we can even extend this into the future podcast, into the next one. Who knows? We can talk about it after. But the psychedelic experience can be achieved in, like we spoke about, in so many different states. So many different ways usually require some type of change to the body, whether it's ingested by an actual substance or just putting yourself in strenuous activity mm. or yeah. focusing on your breathing. But something is changing and that perspective is what changes is the main change is the symptom of what that change did. Right. Is that mm -hmm. that new perspective you attain? Yeah, yeah. And that perspective is what we've labeled as psychedelic. Yeah, in in maybe in one word it's disruption. Disruption. But the, you know we broke it down. Yeah. Like in one word it's disruption. It's, disassociation. And you can look for that. You can f you can find that in controlled ways. I think a lot of people already are very conscious of that, and and they're like adventurous or explore like they're explorers, and you know they go skydiving, they go yeah. traveling. They th those are all trips. Yeah, that's a reason we call it that. Yeah. That's you facing your fears and and getting past those limits, and then seeing mm -hmm. yourself with that new perspective of passing those limits and then that's that's the level of achievement you can achieve in a psychedelic mindset yeah. fuck man it's also meta and shoved up its own ass yeah all right let's fucking let's end the bitch brother I peace love and you, love man. to all peace we leave you in the love and the light of the infinite creator whatever that means and yeah welcome to the end of curious chimps podcast number seven six my six <laughs> The only podcast named after its audience. Boom. Hey. So we are a bunch of curious chips. <laughs> curious chimps, not chips. Chips. Curious chips. It'll be a side. Anyway, this <laughs> let's get out of here. <laughs>